Hey, this is kind of a cool lesson because in this lesson we're going to apply a bunch of the stuff we've been doing with coordinate geometry, our midpoint, distance, and our slope formulas, to stuff we also did earlier when we were studying triangles and their congruence. Uh, in this first example, for, we're going to look at these two triangles, and the vertices are all listed here, but look at the question. We're going to use side, 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 and prove that these triangles are congruent. But all from our coordinate formulas, nothing's given except for the points. So it, the most important thing on these is to be really organized. You do have to look at this as a proof, which means your organization and making it easy for other people to read is important. So to help you out with that, we're going to build a table. Our job is to do side, side, side. So we're going to be calculating the lengths of every side in these triangles. So let's build, put, build a table that we can put our answers in. Let's have one here for triangle ABC. And in one part of this, we're going to list the sides. And then we'll put, we'll split this and we'll list the lengths for those sides. And then let's do a similar table over here for triangle JKL. In column one, we'll put the side name. And then in column two, we'll put the length that we find. All right, so if you're ready to go, I am. Let's start out with AB, side AB. And if side AB has a match, then it's going to be side JK. So let's stop there and let's calculate those. Look over here in the triangle. I found side AB right here. To calculate its length, I'm going to use the distance formula. So our strategy has been, and it still is, to build a right triangle around that. Count the rise and the run number. One, two, three, four. Let me just make a note. That's four. And then two here. So it's a four and a two that I want to use in my distance formula. You'll remember that that's where I'm going to take the square root of four plus two being squared and figure out what that is. So the square root of four plus two squared. Um, four squared is 16 and two squared is four. So that's the square root of 20. That's our AB distance. All right, so I'm going to put the square root of 20. I'm not going to worry about the decimal. My job is to figure out if it's the same for JK. So on JK, I'm going to do the same story here. So looking at my graph, when I build my right triangle for JK, how far over is it? And up, build that there. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 over, and 2 up. It's exactly the same numbers. So I'm going to get 4 and 2 in there, 2 and 4, either way the 4 and the 2, and so I get the same exact answer, radical 20, square root of 20 for that one. So you'll notice that AB and JK are congruent. Let me add tick marks here. AB matches JK. Same goes for the other set. So let's take the next set for B to C. B to C, on my first triangle, it's going to have a match of J to K, or sorry, of K to L. Let me say it right k to l. Let me write it right. I'm having trouble. I've been doing this too much. All right, and the same thing's going to apply on this one. I'm going to see if I can build a right triangle that they'll match. So looking at bc, if we go over and we look down, b to c uh, looks like it's three for the horizontal and just one for that vertical. And then over on kl, I'm going to come build my right triangle there, and it's a 3 and a 1 there also. So when I write out my formula, my distance formula for BC, for BC I get 3 across, 1 down, so that goes 3 squared plus 1 squared. For a total of, let's see, 3 squared is 9, and then add 1 squared, which is 1 more, so that's a total of radical 10. And when I do the KL, I get 1 across and 3 down, so that's going to be these are just going to be flipped around, 1 squared plus 3 squared. It's still going to give me radical 10, though. So my BC side lengths are radical 10 and radical 10. And those are a match, so I get to tick mark those also. Let's double tick mark those. All right, there's one side to do that remains. And that's our, for our first triangle, that's going to be A to C. And it's going to match J to L. And so now we do our calculations for those. On A to C, I'm going to come across, then I'm going to go up. How far across is it? One, two, three, four, five across, up three. Now when I look at J to L, uh, the across comes three and then drops down five. So it's three and down five. I, put, I should put negatives on these, but I'm kind of ignoring them because they're 
We're going to just square out. Anyway, so I'm out of space. Let me see what I can squeeze in right here. So for the A to C segment, it's going to look like a radical with my two key numbers in there of 5 and 3. So it's going to be radical 5 squared plus 3 squared for a total of, let's add that up, 25 plus 9 more. 25 and 9 makes 34. And then doing the L to J part, that's going to be 3 squared and 5 squared. So same thing, just a different order. It's going to give me the same answer. All right, so AC is radical 34. JL is radical 34. All right, so we have shown that our sides are congruent. In fact, let's add that last tick mark. Our sides are congruent. All of this work here is the proof. So you do have to write it out. It's a little bit of a pain. It's a lot to write. But it's the same calculation for all of them. It's almost like, well, I believe it, and let me just take the time to write it down. So these are congruent. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle JKL by the side, side, side. And here's the proof of that right there. This is our proof. All right, so that's how that works. This next example, we're going to see that we are not going to use the graph to the, do this. It says, in fact, without graphing, how can you tell for sure? And we don't even know if these are congruent. The question is, are they? And how can we tell without graphing? Well, we can tell with the same strategy. We can tell if we can use the distance formula if we get the same results. So let's be organized about it. We're going to do side DO. And what will side DO correspond to? That's going to correspond to CA. So let's see if those give us the same answers. In this case, I'm going to do my point stack strategy. So for D, I've got 2, negative 8. And for O, I've got 6, negative 7. Over here for CA, I've got for C, I've got uh, 2, 10. And A is listed as 6 and 9. Those are my point stacks. So I'm going to subtract those and find out what my key numbers in the Pythagorean theorem should be. All right, so uh, 2 subtract 6. That gives me a negative 4. And when I take a negative 8 and subtract that negative 7 again, that's going to be plus. So negative 8 plus 7 is going to bring me to a negative 1. On this one, my subtractions, 2 minus 6. 2 minus 6 gives me a negative 4. And 10 minus 9. That's just going to give me a positive one. So I get different numbers, but when I put them into the Pythagorean theorem formula, or the distance formula, if I take negative 4 squared plus negative 1 squared, when I square these, I just get 16 and 1. And so 16 and 1 combine to be a 17, radical 17 for that one. On CA, it's the same story. It's a negative 4 squared plus a positive 1 squared. When I square those, I also get 16 and 1. Those combine to make a 17. So what I know right now is that DO segment is congruent to the CA segment. What about the other ones? We do the same thing for the other sets. So let's go ahead and check out OG. If I do OG, and what would it match? It would be AT. And I do the same stacking thing. For OG, let's put O here at 6, negative 7. It is 4, negative 2, and I, I'm going to subtract those. Oh, let me list my other ones here first. It's 6, 9, and for T, 4, 4. Okay, so I'm going to subtract these, and let's see what our results are. 6 minus 4 is 2. Negative 7 um, plus 2, that's going to be negative 5. And on the difference here, I get 6 minus 4 is 2, and 9 minus 4 is 5. So I'm thinking I'm going to get these to match also, but let's prove it. So O to G, that's a radical 2 squared plus negative 5 squared. If we simplify that, 2 squared is 4, and then that's 25 more, so a total of 29 under that radical. AT is going to be the same. 2 squared plus 5 squared, that's still radical 29. All right, so we have just proven that OG is congruent to... AT. Now, there's one more side to do. So far, we've got a side and a side. One more side to do, and this one's for you to try on your own. So pause the video and come back to me. See if we got the same result, and we'll decide. Are these congruent triangles or not? All right, how about we compare some answers here? 
I did my point stack. Did you get these same results I got for DG negative 2 and negative 4? But on CT, I got negative 2 and 6. Now, these definitely don't match, but they might after we run them through the formula. So I went ahead and did that. For DG, I got radical 20. And for CT, I got radical 40. So these don't match. How do we write that? We would write it this way. We would say DG is not congruent. That's this symbol. Slash through that like a ninja. It's not congruent to CT. So we have two side matches and one that doesn't match. So are these congruent? We would say no. So triangle DOG is not congruent to triangle CAT. And without graphing, we've proved it. It's a lot to do. You really need to stay organized so that people can follow your thinking. Now this example has a little bit of a different flavor. On this one, we're going to classify what kind of a triangle we get. So do a quick plot of these points. Pause the video right now and plot these points. Come back and make sure you have the same thing I have. All right, if you're back with me, I hope you drew the triangle also. This is what I came up with, with it all labeled. We have to classify it as scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. So we have to see if the sides have any option to tick mark these. Do we have any equal sides? Let's find the three distances. So let's start out with M to A. And let me do a point stack here. So M and A on my point stack is 3, negative 8 with A at 9, 2. I'm going to subtract those and get my key numbers. So 3 minus 9, that's negative 6. And negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. So our distance from M to A would come out with our Pythagorean theorem or distance formula is negative 6 squared plus negative 10 squared, all under that square root. That looks like a 36 and a 100. So this is going to be a root 136. Let me put that in my picture. That's square root of 136. Now, what do we, what do we get if we do the uh, this side, a to x? So let me point stack that also. If I'm going from a with 9, 2, and x with negative 1, 8, let's see what we come up with. If I subtract that, uh, 9 minus negative 1 is going to give me a 10, and 2 minus 8 gives me a negative 6. This looks pretty good. So our ax distance is this square root again with 10 squared added to negative 6 squared. That's going to give me 136 again. So a to x is also 136 under the radical. So, so far I have two sides the same. Do I have a third? Can I call this equilateral? It doesn't look like it, but we're going to have to justify, so let's prove it. All right, so we're going from m to x. Let's do a point stack for mx. m is 3, negative 8, and x is negative 1, 8. Subtract them. 3 minus negative 1 is 4, and negative 8 minus 8 is negative 16. So our mx distance looks like 4 squared plus negative 16 squared. You might want to calculate on that one, negative 16 squared. I think it's a 256, but tell me tomorrow if I'm wrong on that because I'm going with it. 256 added to 16 this is not easy for me. Okay, it's looking like 200 and, hmm, how does 72 sound? All still under the radical. Now, is radical 272 the same? It's not. So we have two sides the same. Here's our justification. This is, the answer would be isosceles. Cool. All right, now we have to find the slope of every side also. Now, here's the good news. We've really done most of the work. When we did our point stacks here, we know those key numbers. So for the slope of each one of these, I'm just going to steal the work I did up here. For example, for MA's slope, let me write the side and the slope here. The side and the slope. For MA's slope, here's MA, I look back to where I did M and A. And remember, one of these numbers is a rise and one of them is a run. The rise is from the Y. So I'm going to just make a slope number out of this. It's negative 10 over negative 6. Negative 10 goes over negative 6. What does that become? If I simplify that, that becomes a positive, and 10 over 6. I can divide both of those by 2. Let me do that so it's positive 5 over 3. Do the same for the other ones. For AX, here's my numbers already right here. So here is my rise and my run. Let's go ahead and make a fraction out of those. So it's a negative 6 as the rise, and the run is positive 10. And when I simplify, it's still negative. I'm going to divide both of those by 2, and I see that that's going to come out as a 3 and a 5, so it's negative 3 fifths. And then my last one. On my last one here, I've got m to x. 
So m to x is, uh, well, here's my numbers for m and x right here. So this is the, the rise, negative 16, put that over the run of 4. Negative 16 over 4, that definitely simplifies. It's still negative. Uh, but I can divide both of those by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. And then 4 divided by 4 is just 1. And since that's on the denominator, I'm going to make that say negative 4. So there's my three slopes. All right, I'm going to leave this last question for you. Is max a right triangle? And you have to justify your response. Do we have a right angle in there? I want you to, I'll give you a hint. You need to look at your answers for this to see what you come up with on that. So think about that one. We'll talk about it tomorrow.